All right, let's, uh, let's talk about GPU-powered HTML5. HTML5 applications will push the limits of graphical richness and interactivity. i9 will run HTML5 applications better by taking advantage of PC hardware through Windows. We call this GPU-powered HTML5. And to help me show this, I want to invite someone who knows a little bit about Windows uh, to come out and, and, and demo. Please welcome Steven Sanofsky, president of the Windows division at Microsoft. Well, good morning, everybody. It's uh, great to be here to have a chance to share some of the developments in Internet Explorer 9. And so what we want to show uh, today a little bit is how we've built Internet Explorer 9 from the ground up on top of the Windows platform, in particular on top of the graphics aspects of the Windows platform. You know, this has been a long time in coming, and with Windows Vista and then with Windows 7, we made the transition to use uh, a much richer graphics API and a much richer uh, ecosystem around graphics. And so IE9 built from the ground up to take advantage of that. So what we're going to do is we're going to show a few demos of how uh, this improved graphics really just makes the web perform better, less waiting, and also uses the same script and the same markup across all of these demos. So what we have running is Dean is going to use uh, Chrome and Firefox, and I'm going to use the developer preview for Internet Explorer 9. And so you'll be able to see that uh, side by side up there. So the, the first one we're going to just show you is a, a little bit of uh, just some basic uh, graphics. And so we're going to... I just, I just wanted to make sure everyone knows, because this is Vegas and sometimes games are rigged, that these are identical machines, <laughs> identically configured pieces of hardware backstage. Um, you'll also notice that there's a CPU meter up here in the upper right corner for those of you who like CPU meters. And I'm sorry for interrupting. No, that, feel free. Okay. <laughs> Always want to interrupt your boss on stage. And so... <laughs> Now he's not going to talk at all for the rest of this. And so, okay, so th these identical machines. Uh, are, so let's uh, first look at some, uh, we just call it rotating logos. And so these rotating logos are just a graphical element. And what these do is they're just rotating around. And what I can do is I'm going to move my mouse up and down really quick and zoom it around. Why don't you do that too, Dean? I'm, I'm trying here, Stephen. Um, actually, why don't, I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to increase. Also up on the upper left, you can see a frame counter, and you can see I'm at 64 frames per second and 100 images. Dean is at three or two frames per second and 36 images. It's kind of oh, more like... Why don't you keep increasing, because I'm going to keep going up and up and I'm, up. I'm going to try another browser. Um, and so you can see, uh, this is just built on top of DirectX, and it's the same markup, the huh? same code, the same script. Okay. And so, all, so just increase it. I'm at uh, 38 with uh, 256 images. Oh, okay. Wow. OK. So that gives you an idea of just how, oh, I can also zoom in for fun, too. So. And I'll stop now, because you're getting dizzy. <laughs> so there you see, same markup, same code, running within uh, the developer preview and in some other browsers as well. And it's, again, built from the ground up to take advantage of that. OK, well, HTML5 uh, supports uh, some new graphics formats. Now, uh, these are interactive and programmable. They're just like HTML. In fact, here's some sample markup on the screen. And this, is, this looks a lot like HTML. They're angle brackets. You can program it with script and respond to events. Uh, why don't we take a look at what this markup looks like uh, in a browser? OK, so I'm going to click on, on this one here. <laughs> <sighs> Actually, Dean, do you remember him? I, I actually think you worked on him for a while. I, I think I worked for you when I did. <laughs> remember, we talked about being quiet a moment ago. Right. Um, here I are uh, actually showing off uh, our, our old pal, Clippy, um, who's actually being rendered in SVG. And so what I'm going to do in the developer preview for Internet Explorer 9, we have our new developer tools. And so, of course, these have been enhanced to take advantage of some of the new HTML5 constructs. And so I'm going to bring up the dev tools. And one of the neat things you can do is I'm going to click on this pointer, and then I'm going to click on an element of the SVG, and I'm immediately going to scroll to um, the proper place in the code. And I could go here and do things like maybe Clippy was out on the town last night. and. Uh, he was really out on the town. And so you can see you're able to both um, use plain text as to render these graphics and then to use the debug tools to work within those graphics as well. Again, this is the kind of thing, the same markup, same code, same script across browsers. OK, why don't we uh, try another example of SVG. Let's go over to Falling Balls. 
And what's interesting here, uh, if you look at each one of these balls, you can kind of see through them. You can see where they overlap, the colors add up, because they've got opacity, they're somewhat transparent. Now each of these balls is an SVG item, and there's actually a, a physics engine running in JavaScript, and when we click drop the balls, there'll be a lot of calculations in physics to make them bounce and, and go around. Should we give this a try? Sure, so um, I'll, we'll just go ahead on three. One, one two, three. Hmm. Yours are kind of going out of the box. Yeah, what's up with that? Well, this is a, an interesting example of, of something we need to work through with HTML5 applications. We all know what the CSS should do, and we all kind of know what the SVG should do. But when they interact together, right now, those standards don't always agree on the same defaults. This is an example of where the tests and working with other browser vendors and the web standards body is really important. And so why don't we show uh, a little bit more? So one of the neat things about, about DirectX is we've been showing it for, for graphics, but you know, one of the things that it does really well is also render text. In fact, there's a separate subsystem of DirectX called DirectWrite that takes advantage of modern hardware to do uh, really cool subpixel alignment and also to show clear type really, really well. So why don't we take a look at, at how that works? OK. Uh, do you want to head over to the International Court of Justice? Not particularly, but here we are in this uh, nice UN org chart. And so we're going to scroll in, fill the screen with a, a word, just a really easy word like and. <laughs> and just for fun, so it's, you can see already, if you look carefully, you can see that the, the rounded corners are a little different, and that's using the subpixel work. So let's take a look, though, at, uh, using the zooming in, and you can see the curves, and you can see the real difference in the curves, that there's jaggedies on one side and really smooth grayscale anti-aliasing on the other. And so that is really a, a neat way to take advantage of the graphics. And again, it's because we built Internet Explorer 9's rendering engine from the ground up to work on this hardware that really has been around since Windows Vista and is very widely available on all the machines now. So let's get out of that. OK. Why don't we, uh, why don't we play a game? OK, I'm up for games. Ready? All right, let's play a game. Now, this is written entirely in SVG and, and JavaScript, and it's kind of a fun, kind of 1979 game. Wow, it reminds me of working at Godfather's in high school. All right, how long do you want to play for? Uh, I'm going to put up my shields, because I'm about to get blown oh, up. Oh, you got there. the shields? Aha. I'll put up my shields. <laughs> I did prepare these demos, by the way, so. <sighs> OK, I'm going to try to fire. Oh. <laughs> Whee! No, I'm supposed to do the Wii. That was me. OK. So, um, so this is a game. It's all written in SVG. And it's the same code, same markup, same script running across both of these browsers. And it shows how HTML5 can help you to relive the 1970s of video games. Um, this looks kind of easy for, for the machines. You want to go into nebula mode? Nebula mode. Sauce for the goose. OK. I heard a couple chuckles. So here we are. This is showing a bunch of DX graphics uh, running around really fast and, uh, uh, well, really fast. And, and, you know, the game still works and you can go ahead and play. In fact, you can do all sorts of, you know, the game, you know, move around and everything. And uh, I'm actually going to even zoom in and show you, oops. Why don't you go ahead and zoom in? Here I am zooming in. How about zooming out? Here's the mobile version. Um, OK, well, you see, so what we've done there is take advantage of the graphics within the game to just update it. And these are, again, same code, same script, same markup in HTML5, just moving around the screen. And so, you, you know, I hope everybody has a chance to understand and see that you'll be able to experience this with the developer preview. But all of the code that you write, because the rendering engine for, for IE9 is built from the ground up to take advantage of this hardware, built on the, the DX foundation, it will uh, really just make the web better and faster for everybody with no changes to your code. And so with that, I want to thank you for the chance to share some of the HTML5 work. You know, we're all in. Thank so, you. Thanks.